Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Storytale Cakes. In this episode, it's going to be all about Disney. So I had so much fun making this cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and let's bake a story. To start off making your castle cake, you're going to need a 6 inch cake and also a 10 inch cake. So both of the cakes are going to be 6 inches in height. I'm going to show you how to frost a 6 inch cake. You just need to repeat the steps to do the 10 inch layer as well. So the recipe for this delicious chocolate cake is in the description box below. Smear on some melted chocolate and then fill in your cakes with some delicious chocolate ganache. If you want the recipe for the ganache, it's in the description box below. Use the bottom of the cake for the top because it's nice and flat and then just cut off any excess. Apply all that chocolate goodness, ew, what am I saying? <laughs> chocolate goodness around until you're happy with how it looks. So I just used a knife to kind of go through and lift it off from the cake board and now I'm going to put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes for it to set before we actually put the fondant over it. Actually after it sets you might want to leave it outside so it's not too cold before you put the fondant otherwise the fondant can sometimes sweat a bit. As you cut the excess, cut it a bit at a time so you reduce the risk of cutting into your chocolate cake because this ain't a naked cake tutorial. And a super inexpensive tool is just to use your hands to create the sharp edges. And you can also use an edging tool. Now the next step can be quite freaky, so brace yourself guys. We're going to use a brick stencil, you can buy this from any cake decorating store. And we're going to go around the whole cake. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but don't worry, I'll guide you through it. It just is a matter of practice and just trying to put it in the same position and not moving it one when you're pressing it down. The main thing to note here is to hold onto your cake and board so it doesn't move and gives a better balance then push down and imprint onto the sides. Now the great thing about this is you can always move the template into your initial indent and touch up on any parts that you want to bring out more. Watch this guys, this is the satisfying part and we have bricks. Pull out some pink fondant and just use a pin to pop any air bubbles. Check out this majestic brush! So this is just some plain water and then just drape it over the cake. Start off by sealing up the top edges because that's where all the weight lands and in a circular belly rub motion just go around the cake. If you like your cakes round you don't even have to pinch it but I am loving the sharp edge look so I'm going to go ahead and pinch it. Now that we've covered our cake the next step is to make sure our cake doesn't go like that. So you need to make sure you either use bubble tea straws or skewers. I've always been showing you how to do bubble tea straws, pretty much just cut it level and then cut it and they act as dowels. But today I want to show you that if you don't have bubble tea straws, you can also use skewers. Mark the skewers and cut it flush to the cake and add at least five because we are not going for a leading a towel pizza cake. I've got here some paper rolls, so they're pretty much just leftovers I got from like cling wrap. Inside if you have a look here, that roll there, it was just like leftover. Or you can also use paper towels. If you don't want to use any of that and you want to kind of just have it ready, then you can also go to your hardware store and buy one of these tubes. I actually don't know what these are used for, I think they're used for like pressure pipes yeah pressure pipes so you can go to hardware stores and buy these and they come in different sizes as well I left this scene a bit longer for you so you can see all the sizes I've used get some sturdy cake and cut out a trapezium because we're going to use this for the top tier of our cake Check out this super cute smoother guys, this is so cool because you can kind of like detach it and smooth out mini cakes and once I reach 5,000 subscribers I'm definitely going to put it as part of the giveaway. Remember to add a little bit of chocolate to help stick it in place and kind of use the smoother to help smooth it back in place and trim off any excess. Use a texture and mark where you want the rolls to be pink, so in this case mine was about one and a half inches that will be pink and the bottom part of our rolls will be grey. So kind of use a, like a tape measure as well to measure how long you need to roll the fondant, in this case mine was about four inches. Add some water to the roll to help adhere it and then roll it out to cover up the seams and then a knife to trim off the excess. Next step is just to add the brick stencil over the fondant and roll it. Just remember sometimes if you're in like a more humid area, you may need to dust a bit of cornflour on it. Okay, so this part is really important. Try to lift your knife as you cut in small sections because if you do it in one motion, you'll find that it deforms the shape. Okay. 
Once you've got your first layer on and you want to put another layer, you need to measure it out again because it'll be thicker. So once you've got the measurement, you'll know how long to roll the next piece. For the next layer, I'm just cutting out a long strip and mini square blocks for the nice castle look. Then just pasting it over that little seam area. So I did these for the four rolls on the cake board. It's all about the detail, so get an oval shaped cutter and cut out a half an oval, paste it onto the cake. This makes a really cute window and you can also add crisscross and roll out a yellow fondant piece to wrap around the window. I had to innovate here because I lost my mini imprinted leaf cutter so instead I used a bigger leaf cutter and then I used a smaller leaf cutter to cut out the leaves. I recommend adding mini flowers as well because when you look out a window you want to see those gorgeous flowers and not just all leaves. Cover all your rolls pink and for some of them you can add pink strips and for the other ones you can create detailed gold looks and simply use a knife to trim it down and use a circle cutter to create a nice pattern. You can definitely just leave it yellow, it's quite nice but I want it to be extra so I added a little bit of gold with rose spirit to kind of pop out that colour. And of course some little black windows on top as well because it kind of resembles the real Disney castle. If you look at the real life Sleeping Beauty castle, you kind of see that it has these two rolls on the side. So this was the look I was kind of going for. I kind of just imprinted it so it gives that nice detail. Painted it a bit of gold after I pasted this on. And then I added a little cross on top to resemble that Sleeping Beauty castle look. Look at that shimmer. It looks so, so gold and majestic. I'm so excited to see it come together. And for the remaining rolls that you add on top of the castle, you can make it more detailed and paint it gold because if you have a look at the actual Disney castle, it appears that the top tier is quite detailed. If you're like me, you adore glitter, so we're going to make some glittery flags. Just cut out a flag shape and made one end a bit longer so you can roll the toothpick in place. Make sure you add some water and let it dry overnight. Once it's completely dried, add some water on top of the flags and sprinkle on that majestic glitter vibes. To create our magical sugar door, I'm just using a large circle cutter to get the top part and a knife to get the nice wooden patterns. You can also use a skewer to add little dots to resemble realistic wood and add some lines for details as well. Paste on two small fondant yellow pieces, indent them with the fondant tool or back of your paintbrush and then add another two small pieces on top. You can also add the fondant patterns around the door and paint it gold to match the real life Disney castle look. So the next step is I'm going to show you how to cover your board using this fondant green and I'll show you how to stitch up the green patterns together so you can't even tell that they were just two pieces combined onto the board. I'm just getting a little bit of water so this just helps adhere our fondant. I'm just brushing it around the board. Don't worry if it's not wide enough to go around the whole board because I'll show you how to stitch it up together as well. Smooth out your fondant with a smoother and a knife to trim off any excess. Brush on a little bit of water and adhere the next piece. Use your fingers to smooth up the gaps and this is where the magic comes. You need a little bit of Crisco. I don't recommend water because water stains the fondant whereas Crisco doesn't. So I'm just getting a little bit on my spatula and adding it in the gaps of the fondant piece. And then you just need to smooth it out but make sure you work with it quite quickly. Now it's time to make some grass and I'm simply just using an open star tip and then we're just going to literally just flick it out. pebble look, dust a little cornflower on and then tap off the excess and then put it on the fondant. So you might need to do this if your weather is more humid. Once this is done, just add a little bit of water and paste that majestic pattern onto your cake board. 
It's time to make our castle cones. Just roll it out in the palm of your hands or you can also use a fondant smoother and then just cut out a yellow strip and put around and some crisscross patterns and a nice beautiful blue color shimmer to the top of your cone and add a yellow fondant dot and of course paint it in that golden gorgeous tone color. So what you want to do next is just pre-arrange where you want your rolls to be and then melt some delicious white chocolate into a mini piping bag. And all you need to do is take your roll, flip it over, add a little bit of white chocolate on it and then place it wherever you'd like. So I'm going to stick it right here. To make it extra sturdy, you can also use a skewer and just poke it through, leaving it about around there. And you can kind of just snip it all the way down. I'm just adding a little bit of chocolate on the rims on the top of these because these ones have no skewer so you're going to need that chocolate to help stick it in place. The last one. So the next step is optional, you can add more details and add a nice golden window to your Disney castle cake. So I just painted yellow fondant with a bit of gold and added blue. Then I went ahead and made another one. So the window is going to look like that. And remember how we did that nice pattern for our rolls? We're going to do the same thing, but this time just make the pattern bigger. And this is going to go on our top tier. So now that our cake is looking super majestic, it's time to add some little final touches to even pop it out more. So we're going to do a little bit of pink, blue and gold bricks just to add that extra vibe. We've got here some gold luster dust, blue and pink. Just to bring out the colour, I'm going to use a bit of rose spirit in each of them. So mine's a little bit too diluted, so I'm going to add a little bit more in. So you want more of like a thicker paste going on. So there we have our super majestic Disney castle cake. If you guys happen to make this tutorial, remember to share it with me on Facebook or Insta. I'd love to see and like it. And remember to subscribe for more vids.